What's really good? It's your boy Spotted Man is here for Heel Kaiju, and it has been a whirlwind week for the WWE post WrestleMania. And just in case you missed anything, we're here to give you the rundown. This is your standing 10 count. Once again, NXT took over WrestleMania weekend by putting on some of the best wrestling in the WWE and also proving to the world that they are not just the little brother to the main roster. We had such amazing matches like Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa, the latter match for the North American title where we crowned the first ever champion, and even Shayna Baszler showed up and showed out. So if you already put out $9.99 for the network, and saw WrestleMania but happened to miss out on TakeOver, baby, what is you doing? Go ahead and give that a look. Speaking of mania, we ended the night with Brock Lesnar holding his title triumphantly over his head while a battered and bloodied Roman Reigns laid in the center of the ring. Now, I was surprised and I'm pretty sure nobody else was expecting Brock Lesnar to retain his title, especially with Roman Reigns coming after him as heavily as he did. But apparently Brock Lesnar has signed a new contract with the WWE, which extends him for just a little bit longer. So the real question is what happens next with Roman Reigns? I mean, does the man with the wettest hair actually go heel? Does he bend out his frustration on the rest of the roster? Maybe even the rest of the staff? Who knows, but we do know that something has got to change and something has got to give after another unsuccessful bid to wrest the universal title away from the beast incarnate. Now during WrestleMania, we also got another match that everybody has been kind of sort of wanting and it went, it, 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 was, it was a match, it was a match. Undertaker versus John Cena. Now throughout the majority of the night, John Cena sat not so ringside, Amongst the unwashed matches, guzzling down $15 beer and eating $45 nachos, suffering the miasma of Axe body spray and one too many smarks probably telling him, you know what, John, you probably should go heel. And, you know, honestly, I kind of agree with him because, you know, the heel side, we do have candy and JBL shaped pinata. So come on, John. Come on. He got word later on in the night that Undertaker was in the building and John Cena ran out of the arena faster than Paul Ryan could run out on his constituents. Yes, I could be topical. John Cena returns, no Undertaker, but instead he gets serenaded by everybody's favorite balladeer, Elias, to which he quickly dispatches him and is expecting nobody to show up. As he's about to leave, Taker shows up and really, I think it was less of a match and more of a reminder that you don't mess with Taker. He didn't look a day over expired. I mean, he is a dead man. Anyway, Taker beat down John Cena in what was about about, you know, five to ten minute match, but it still showed that he could go and not only go, but go well. So kudos to you, Taker. I see you, dead man. And what is sure to be a trivia question asked by Robot Alex Trebek in about 20 years, Braun Strowman finally chose his tag team partner for his bid for the Raw Tag Team titles and his name is Nicholas. That's right, a 10 year old is officially a WWE Tag Team Champion. But Braun Strowman choosing to be the best man on the roster instead decided not to put him through the rigors of a 300 day travel schedule with all the bumps and bruises and awkward conversations that are sure to be there. He decided to relinquish the title to Raw GM Kurt Angle, which triggered a play-in tournament for the Raw Tag Team titles against the bar at World's Greatest Royal Rumble. So keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. In what turned out to be one of the best matches on the card, Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship damn near tore the roof off of the Superdome. But the big news, in all of this, not the near falls, not the submissions, was Shinsuke Nakamura turning heel. Instead of shaking AJ Styles' hand like a man, I gotta give him kudos, he gave him a low blow and ended his night with everybody in the arena completely flummoxed by this decision. Hey, I'm rooting for you, Shinsuke. Let's just hope that you turning heel means they stop calling you the artist. Now going into this next match, 
I don't think anybody was expecting what actually happened, which was a pretty entertaining and well thought out and well told story of a match. Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. But the real news in all of this is not how good Ronda Rousey showed herself to be in the ring, actually, you know, engaging in everything and showing her face and emotion and really drawing you into the match. Nor was it the Star Wars finally having a go at it after so many years, Kurt Angle versus Triple H happening right there in the ring. No, nor was it Ronda Rousey finally giving Stephanie McMahon her comeuppance by damn near breaking her arm. It was the fact that Stephanie finally got Triple H's spit down right. Hey, I know it's hard. Honestly, I mean that 100% unironically because everybody I know who tries to get that spit just right ends up dribbling it down their chin like this is their first time ever having a glass of water. So you know what? Kudos to you. But yes, this match turned out to be a sleeper on the card. Ronda Rousey put on a show and everybody else did their part in making her seem believable like she actually belonged in the ring. And I'm honestly, honestly anticipating what they're going to do with her next. The question for a little over two and a half years has been, who's ready for Asuka? And we finally got that answer in Mania. Her name is Charlotte. For two and a half years, Asuka has been putting down anybody who's been putting a ring in front of her and doing it with such aplomb and smarminess that has made her kind of endearing. But at Mania, Charlotte shocked the world by putting an end to Asuka's winning streak, not just by defeating her, but by making her tap to the figure eight. Of course, you know, we didn't get a chance to see it that much because we were in a hotel room with spotty Wi-Fi. So yeah, aren't conventions fun? Charlotte ends up beating the Empress, effectively dethroning her and putting herself up on the pedestal as the woman to beat in WWE, at least until that following Tuesday. You see, the iconic duo, which we'll get into a little bit later, ended up debuting and beating the brakes off of the Queen City native taking her down and saying that they can make her title disappear like magic, which is kind of what happened. Leaving her broken down in the ring, Carmella finally runs down to the ring with her briefcase. Of course, Mike Kyoto decided to take her, take his time as she cashed in, but you know, that's neither here nor there. But as it stands, Carmella is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. The SmackDown Women's field is completely crowded but in the best of ways. So you can expect to see a lot more stories and a lot more people coming in to put in their bid to be the woman on the blue brand. Speaking of the iconic duo and call-ups, you know how it is after WrestleMania. We had several NXT call-ups show up on Monday Night Raw and on SmackDown. Not just the iconic duo, but No Way Jose, The Authors of Pain, and Ember Moon. Yes, we have a stacked roster on the main roster, and it's about to be big. Not only do we have the call-ups, we have some people returning during this week. Jeff Hardy back from injury, Samoa Joe back from injury, Bobby Lashley back from TNA and Bellator, whichever. But we got some people coming right back and we have some people possibly leaving. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens losing at WrestleMania means that they don't have a job on SmackDown Live. So they came to Raw, they came pleading Kurt Angle for a job. But he said he only had one spot and it had to be filled by a match between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. What was, of course, a great match with a lot of animosity that these two can bring and a lot of storytelling as well. Nobody won. Both men failed to reach the 10 count. So as Kurt Angle said on Raw, maybe we'll see them on TNA. Um, uh, what's Kevin Steen and El Generico doing in the Impact Center? On a more somber note, Paige finally announced on Raw after a match with Absolution that she has effectively retired from the field of wrestling. While everybody knew that her injuries would leave her to be out for quite some time indefinitely, in fact, we finally got the confirmation that everybody was dreading. Paige is no longer going to be a wrestler, and we'd like to wish her luck on her future endeavors. 
and her future endeavors to be a GM on SmackDown Live. Hey, you know what? Millennials, we know how to bounce back. Paige, congratulations on your new gig. And she's already put in her work by putting on the next match and the final point on our standing 10 count. And that is a match between AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. Now, see, this may just seem like a regular match to a lot of people, but here's the thing. Daniel Bryan has been back for just about, a, what, a few weeks now? This isn't him taking a few bumps on the hardest part of the apron or him getting a beat down administered by Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens or even him being kind of hidden away at WrestleMania so Shane McMahon could take all of the damage during their Mania match. No, no, no. This is just a match. No gimmicks. No stipulations. Just a match. And this match feels like business as usual, which after, what, three years with Daniel Bryan out with a neck injury, I'm just glad to see things just start to come to some sense of normalcy between these two. I mean, of course, I want to see him, you know, be healthy, but I'm not a monster. However, the match didn't end the way anybody expected because Shinsuke Nakamura showed up, heel boy showed up, decided to beat the brakes. I'm going to use that. Beat the brakes off of both AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, but he made sure to nutshot AJ Styles, not once, not twice, but about three times. He wanted the world to know that he was unhappy that he didn't get a chance to be WWE champion and that he was gonna take it all out on everybody else if he had a chance. And we're done. Thank y'all for joining us. I'm not gonna go through the whole spiel if you guys like, comment, subscribing or anything like that. Hit a little bell on the corner now, y'all. Y'all know the drill, y'all know the drill. What I am gonna say though, is I'm glad that you guys are with us. And I hope that we'll be able to provide you with more content. This being our first episode, we hope to have many, many, many more, and we hope that you guys are along with us for the ride. That being said, we hope y'all are good. Heels up, deuces, keep smashing.